वेलकम टू द न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ मनी वर्क स्वामी पॉडकास्ट वी आर रिकॉर्डिंग दिस सेशन ऑन सेप्टेंबर 15 2021 इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टेलीकॉम सेक्टर्स रिस्क एंड अपॉर्चुनिटीज विद मी आई हैव अवर इक्विटी एनालिस्ट केतन गुजराती टू हेल्प टू हेल्प अस अंडरस्टैंड इट बेटर सो केतन इंडियन टेलीकॉम सेक्टर हैज गोन थ्रू लॉट ऑफ ट्रबल वंस इट हैज डजन ऑफ प्लेयर्स बट नाउ वी आर लेफ्ट विद टू एंड हाफ प्लेयर्स प्रैक्टिकली What's your opinion on the industry and individual players? To understand the telecom sector, one has to understand business cycle. Almost all sectors are cyclical. Some are more and some are less. So let me explain the business cycle first. Any high growth industry attracts lot of players into it. Every company tries to establish a profitable business model. Right. Because the industry is growing, there is a space for all players. Hmm. Uh-huh. However as the growth moderates the weaker player bail out or go bankrupt correct now few players that have gained scale or managed cost tend to survive the down cycle in that industry mm. as the number of players come down profitability comes back for established players which leads to great returns for shareholders now if you buy at the start of the cycle you can make healthy return till the cycle stays okay as you rightly said aditya Telecom sector had around 12 to 13 players during high growth period. Mm. From just 60 crore mobile connections in 2010, we went to 100 crores in 2013, which is in less than 3 years. Yes. But as growth slowed down, the weak companies like Airtel, Telenor, DoCoMo, Arcom all went bankrupt, mm. while Airtel, Vodafone and Idea survived. Now today we are seeing upcycle in telecom sectors. There are only few players and the pricing is on the upward trajectory. Mhm. Now today even we are seeing everyone is batting for telecom companies to succeed so that the industry thrives as well as they remain competitive. Mm-hmm. Just today we heard that government is providing four year moratorium for AGRDUs which will also improve telecom companies cash flows in near term. We expect upward trajectory in telecom companies sales and profitability over medium term. Okay. So did Jio's entry led to this disruption? It was a game changer, right? In a way that's right. Uh, Jio's pricing is why fringe players bailed out because they knew that they wouldn't survive. This reduced the number of players to just four, and within that, two of them merged to become Vodafone Idea Limited. Yeah. Now think of it this way: that Jio was a new player, and it had made very large investment into telecom. Hmm. The investment was close to half of the existing invested capital in telecom sector. Now, with such large investment, it had to grab significant market share to the tune of. almost 50% in very less time yeah so when jio entered existing telecom companies used to charge a very high price for voice and data yeah now this was because during competitive periods telecom companies had spent lot of amount on acquiring spectrums hmm. so to earn a decent amount on this large investments they were charging very high than they should have now the equation changed when jio once jio entered it came to a price with a price which was lower than the fixed cost of many smaller players now this obviously led to a disruption mm-hmm. now even if jio wouldn't have entered in telecom space sooner or later the big players like bharti or vodafone would have lowered their prices and driven out small players now this is how capitalism works when strong gets stronger and again faces competition if it becomes very profitable so this causes cycles in any industry and telecom was nothing different Okay so how good is telecom business model the telecom business model is definitely very competitive it is very hard to show any kind of differentiation between two players mm. so this often leads to very poor pricing power mm-hmm. over long term if competition remains moderate the leaders in the sector can earn good return on equity mm-hmm. uh, besides there are threats like technology upgrade large scale investment required for the same which could hamper the cash flow growth mm. So one must be cautious and have an exit strategy to take advantage of the good years for wealth creation and avoid some bad years. Okay. So uh, how did Money Works Home manage to buy Bharti Airtel in 2019 at 350 rupees per share? How can average investor learn to buy such winners? Now coming about average investor he is actually victim of recency bias. He may track only those companies which have done well in last year or they might be performing in this year. He doesn't track st- strong companies that might be cheap or out of favor for a reason. 
he will obviously miss out on buying future winners which help create wealth Hmm. Now buying after stock is up 300-400% in a year leads to disappointment not only in terms of moderate upside but also risk of downside. This doesn't mean you need all the winners in market. You just need 3 or 4 winners each year. Even if rest of the portfolio matches index returns, overall experience will be very good. Correct. Now coming to Bharti Airtel, we believe that Bharti Airtel had a significant market share to keep its cost very low and spend enough on the infrastructure required to fight competition. Okay. Now it was not luck to spot Airtel in 2019. We have been studying Airtel for almost 10 years. Hmm. We had studied and documented what are the key drivers of its business. How was its fixed cost versus the competition? How good was its service and customer stickiness? Mm. Now, on the basis of that, we had paired Bharti Airtel in our watch list. Now, uh, it was a strong player in the past. It also earned high return on capital. Now, we just had to wait for the right time to pull the trigger. Okay. So, we were waiting for telecom cycle to pick up. Up cycles usually happen on two or three things. Mm. One is the volume goes up, the sales volume, and the second could be the pricing goes up, and the third uh, might be the utilization going up, which also leads to higher profit growth in the uh, short term. Mm -hmm. Now, since telecom is a very well penetrated sector, it had to be the pricing piece that had to uh, move and had become important. Okay. And less number of player meant that pricing power had to come back sooner than later. Right. Now come September 19, there was a lot of noise around AGR dues. As soon as we saw that uh, pricing was likely to go up, we recommended Airtel at a price which was quite cheap versus its past valuations and practically the price was same for 7 to 8 years. So we saw a very good bargain in form of Bharti Airtel. Mm. Now since then we have a buy call on Bharti Airtel. If you read our notes, you will learn more about the key drivers and how to identify a similar pattern in a different sector going forward. Okay. Now one could argue that why we didn't buy Reliance as it was in a similar position. Mm. But if you actually see Reliance, Jio formed only 30% of Reliance overall valuation. Mm -hmm. So we were not interested in Reliance refinery or pet chem business. Mm. And Jio was not separate, listed separately. So even if Jio were to double its profits over next three years, mm. we wouldn't have captured the entire 100% rise in its profit. So, so we refrained from buying Reliance Industries. Okay. Now the third player was Vodafone, which was also struggling and it did not invest sufficiently in the network, mm. which could have caused loss in market share. And again, it would not have led to equivalent rise in profits, even if pricing were to go up. So Bharti Airtel was a very obvious call and I'm glad that we made our investors money in Bharti Airtel. All right. So where do you see Indian telecom industry in the next three to five years? What is the future of 4G and outlook for telecom companies with respect to investment in 5G? Based on current data, we still have positive view on the sector. We believe that average pricing will go up and profit growth also will be very good over the next two years at least. Now even today, just 70 crore connections are on 4G out of 120 crore connections. Mm. Now there is still 50 crore people who are left to shift to 4G and start paying slightly higher than the past. Now thereafter, we have to look for data penetration of 4G and whether there is room for pricing growth before we decide to exit. Yeah. As retail investors, we are managing small amounts of money versus an institutional fund managers like a mutual fund who manages thousands of crores. Mm. Now after we make any decisions, we can enter and exit quite easily versus a fund manager who manages large sum. True. Also, uh, also we will not see countrywide adoption of 5G so soon. It will be first in metros and then in industrial clusters. And use of high speed will be more for commercial purpose rather than personal. Mm -hmm. Even in developed countries, a user is questioning why should he move to 5G if 4G is giving him decent speed. Yeah. So for now, we are not so worried about 5G investments, but we will be continuously monitoring new developments in the sector and act accordingly. Alright, thank you Ketan for enlightening us on this particular sector today. If you are a frequent visitor to our podcast, if you have any special topic for us to discuss, do mention in the comments tab. Thank you.